everyone, today I'll be teaching you how to make these delicious, crispy, golden brown crab cakes. In my last video, I made crab stuffed lobster. Well, I had some of the crab stuffing left, so I decided to use it to make crab cakes. The method I used to make these crab cakes is actually by Gordon Ramsay. I saw a video that he made on how he makes his crab cakes and I was like, oh snap, I have got to try that. So let's go ahead and get started with the video. First I'm going to show you how to make the crab mixture from the previous video. First we're going to chop up our vegetables into very small fine pieces. We're going to be chopping up an onion, a green pepper, a red pepper, and some green onions. Oh, and parsley. In a small skillet, melt some butter at medium heat. Then place 1 4th cup of your finely chopped peppers into the skillet, and 1 4th cup of your finely chopped onions as well. Saute your vegetables until they're translucent. Make sure to season your vegetables. I only season my vegetables with some salt and pepper. When you're finished, take your vegetables off of the heat to cool. In a medium sized bowl, pour in 1 4th cup of breadcrumbs and 1 tablespoon of breadcrumbs. Then add your sauteed vegetables. Now add 1 4th cup of green onions and one tablespoon of parsley. Mix everything together until well combined. Then add two tablespoons of egg whites. After that, add one tablespoon and two teaspoons of mayonnaise, two and one half teaspoons of fresh lemon juice, one half teaspoon of Wickershire sauce, and one and one half tablespoon of Dijon mustard. Mix everything together until well combined. Oh, and by the way, I didn't think about this until after I had made everything, but I should have added one half teaspoon of hot sauce. I am suggesting to you now, add one half teaspoon of hot sauce in your crab cakes. Now we're gonna add our seasonings. So you're gonna add 1 4 teaspoon of onion powder, 1 4 teaspoon of garlic powder, 1 4 teaspoon of Old Bay, 1 4 teaspoon of Creole seasoning, and 1 4 teaspoon of pepper. Then add 1 16 ounce can of lump crab meat. Now we're gonna fold the crab meat into the mixture. Make sure you fold everything until well combined. Alright, so now you're finished with your crab cake mixture. Now it's time to create the actual crab cake. Fill a circular cookie cutter with the crab cake mixture we just made. We're using a cookie cutter so that our crab cakes have a perfect circular shape. Make sure you're gently pressing the mixture down so it creates the shape. I didn't fill it all the way in the cookie cutter just because I didn't want my crab cakes to be that tall, so I did leave a bit of room at the top just so I could get the height I wanted. When you finish filling the cookie cutter, gently press down and take the crab cake out of the cookie cutter. When you do, you should have a perfect circular crab cake. Use a spatula to set it to the side on a baking sheet. I love how circular and perfect these crab cakes look. I mean, they just look so nice. <laughs> All right, moving on. Place your crab cakes into the fridge so they can firm up and keep their shape. While your crab cakes are in the fridge, we're gonna do some prep work. We're gonna start by cracking and beating the eggs in the middle bowl. You don't have to do this first. I just always do it first for some reason, like always. I don't know why. Pour flour in the first bowl, 
and panko breadcrumbs in the third bowl. He didn't do this in the video, but I seasoned my flour and my breadcrumbs. The seasonings I used were pepper, creole, garlic powder, onion powder, and Old Bay seasoning. But I only added pepper and creole in the panko. When you're finished, take your crab cakes out of the fridge. Lightly season your crab cake with some pepper and salt. We're going to begin coating them. Coat your crab cake in the flour. Shake off the excess flour and then place it in the eggs. I used a spatula to flip the crab cake over just because I didn't uh, want to pick it up and it fall apart. Using a spoon, I covered the crab cake completely in the eggs. Then I picked up the crab cake with a spatula and placed it in the panko breadcrumbs. Cover the crab cake in the panko breadcrumbs. Then shake off the excess breadcrumbs. Place the crab cake to the side on a baking sheet. Then just repeat this process until you run out of crab cakes. Now pat down the breadcrumbs and then shape it again. Do this with each crab cake. Place a little bit of oil in a pan at medium heat. Place your crab cakes into the pan. Cook the crab cakes until golden brown on both sides. I like my crab cakes a bit more well done, so you're really going to see the golden brown color. <laughs> Once you've colored both sides of the crab cakes, you're going to add 3 tablespoons of butter into the pan. As the butter starts to froth, it colors the sides of the crab cake. Roll the pan around, then use the melted butter to baste your crab cakes. Now take your crab cakes out of the pan. I place the crab cakes on a plate with a couple of paper towels on them just so the excess oil and butter could drain. Then I place them on a silicone baking sheet. Gordon Ramsay actually put his crab cakes in a pan but I had too many to do that and I wanted my crab cakes now so I place it on a baking sheet. But anyway, place your crab cakes into the oven at 425 degrees for about 5 minutes. This is going to make the crab cake nice and crispy on the outside and nice and warm on the inside. And that's it! You are totally finished with your crab cakes. The crab cakes look so pretty. They're golden brown. They look excellent. I really like the method Gordon Ramsay uses to cook his crab cakes and I will definitely be doing this again. And when you squeeze some lemon on the top and then dip it in some crab cake sauce, oh my god, it is excellent. I have, I'm gonna make these again one day, I swear. Mm -hmm. Alright, that's it for this video. Don't forget to turn on your notification bell for more videos like this. Like, comment, and subscribe, and thank you so much for watching. Bye!